Welcome to Thursday, October 17th, 2024. This day where the podcast brought to you by Converse County Tourism. Douglas and Glen Rock, Wyoming are bustling with action this holiday season. Plan your excursion, including fun activities, beautiful downtowns, and historic treasures. Learn more at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Finally, the changes are here. A lot of the clear skies that we've been enjoying or not enjoying, depending on your perspective, are going away. So opportunities to see the comet aren't going to be as good in the coming evenings and nights because, well, we'll finally have some clouds. Rain and snow, as we'll show you here in a moment, is finally showing up on radars again. Had to dust off the radars, see if they're still working as areas of rain and snow are expanding across areas west of the divide. And there'll be a, a slow expansion eastward of the precipitation that's forming this morning through tonight and into tomorrow. We'll have mountain snow, including snow over the Elk Mountain and Pack Trail Fire areas. We're going to have rain and snow down low. Now, the first question I'm going to get is how much snow is going to fall? Well, I can't tell you that over such a large geographic area and such diverse elevations out there. I will tell you that a lot of you will see your first snowflakes of the year, but this system does not have a connection to Arctic air. This is cold, moist Pacific air. So snow levels aren't gonna get too low. If they do get lower, the snow is not going to accumulate. But if you live at 7,000 feet or above, you might get some snow on the grassy areas. It'll be more significant in the mountains above eight or 9,000 feet. So hunters and travelers going over the mountain passes especially, but also the higher elevations of Interstate 80, you're gonna maybe have some slick conditions, especially tonight and tomorrow. Now we'll see the secondary low hit the Colorado mountains and maybe the mountains of Southern Wyoming, like the snowy range in Sierra Madres with another round of snow this weekend. So hunters just gotta pay attention. We will see moderating temperatures since this is not an Arctic wave. Temperatures are gonna rebound but they're going to rebound to just add or slightly above average, not way warm like what we've seen lately. And then the weather looks more active. We have a, a cool front midweek. A stronger frontal system is going to arrive next weekend. The comet, a little hard to see with the smoke and haze. You can see it here real briefly. It, with the smoke and the haze and some high cloudiness, it's been harder to see the comet than if we didn't have those two things, but also the moon. The moon in the evening is really bright. So this comet is a bright comet, but we're having some uh, problems because of smoke haze and a bright moon. Nonetheless, you'll want to watch it. Now, despite all of that, Chris here got a great shot of the comet here over the last couple of evenings, and he put it together and he sent it to me yesterday. Okay, I had to do that. That was awful. I know that was really bad, but I had to laugh. That was pretty clever. The comet is still going to be available all the way up through Halloween, climbing higher in the sky, but getting a little less bright each and every night. But still a good target when skies are clear. Unfortunately, big smoke plumes yesterday as the winds picked up. Fire activity did as well. But now we're going to go in reverse with the fire activity because we're finally getting help. And there it is. Wow, something on the satellite this morning. You can see this area of cloudiness right here. This is associated with the trough of low pressure and the Pacific cold front. You're going to see the heavier precipitation bands forming along this north-south axis here. As the low comes in and swings into the Great Basin, it will pull moisture up and over the frontal boundary. And that's why Utah, western Wyoming, north central Wyoming, parts of western Colorado are going to see the heaviest precipitation with this system. There we have on the satellite imagery and the radar imagery this morning, you see this axis? This axis is basically going to be something you'll see on radar all day with the axis slowly doing this. If you watch the radar today through this evening, this is what you're going to see over time as the frontal boundary is then overrun with moisture coming up like this. So it's going to be those western areas that are going to see the most. This is from a webcam on Tea Time Pass early this morning. Yes, in the light, you see that right there? That is precipitation. Raining and snowing up there will be turning the snow soon. So you'll see by late afternoon, the frontal boundary is gonna be pushing out across the plains, bringing cooler weather and some showers. 
but it'll be this axis right here that has the heavier rain and snow. By Saturday morning, the cutoff happens. The main jet stays up here, but this low meanders. So the Four Corners area, parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Southern Utah, you're gonna see some moisture hanging up into the mountains here in the valleys as well and staying wet and then getting out into the plains later on, as you'll see here in a moment. This is through Saturday morning, and this is the national, uh, we call this the, basically, this is the models average together. So instead of just one model, it's all of them kind of stirred into a pot and put together. But this is a good way to kind of show where the heavier precipitation is going to be. We still have the heavier moisture concentrated, quite frankly, where we need it. The Bighorn Mountains and the Elk Fire on the Pack Trail Fire as well. Look at the Wind River Mountains. Look at the Uintas and the Wasatch. The Southwest Mountains of Colorado, the Bear Tooth. You can see the heavier moisture where it's going to fall and some good moisture up into the Black Hills. Then as the upper level low kicks out, it'll start to produce moisture out on the plains. Unfortunately, there's this notch here where the, there will be precipitation, but not, uh, not nearly as much as other areas. Now that's through Saturday morning. So as we said yesterday, you need to view this system sort of in two phases. Here's the first phase of snow through Saturday morning. So you can see we're still looking at the mountain ranges picking up the heaviest snow. This is predominantly a mountain event. Yes, there'll be some snow in the lower elevations, but mainly the heavier stuff stays up high. But if you're going to be traveling, especially overnight tonight and again Friday night, those snow levels will drop. Now, by Sunday evening, 6 p.m., that upper low kicks off to the northeast. Now, it has weakened, but it is going to have underneath it a fair amount of moisture and instability. So we talk about these sneaky cutoff lows coming back over the area again, and we do see another band of precipitation. This is from Saturday midday through Tuesday morning. Look at this heavier moisture here in southern Colorado, northeastern New Mexico, the Panhandle areas. Then on the back side here, this is where the southern mountains of Wyoming and northern Colorado will have a secondary chance of snow during the middle to the end of the weekend. And this area of shower activity may end up being a bit more expansive than the models are showing right now. So this is part two. There's part two of the snowfall. And then if you put both part one and part two together, the snowfall looks like this. Could have some really heavy snow in the mountains of southwest Colorado, the northern Wasatch and Uintas as well, kind of the two areas where I think the mountain snow will be the most impressive. By the next period of time frame where we're watching the next front, the next stronger front will arrive next weekend. We're going to have a couple of small systems pass through the region during the middle of the week. They're mainly just going to act and make temperatures a bit cooler, bring a few showers to the region. But next weekend, the bigger push of frontal boundaries come through. And notice up here, we've got more of a straight jet stream now instead of one that's going to be forming the troughs. So there are more queued up coming towards the end of October and into early November. Have yourself a good Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow.